Tremendous hat work from the guru himself. Some camels have been trapped in the yard. So we're off now to go and check them out. Camels, eh? Guru, good on you. Our Guru's got us, got us our camels. Following him out here, trap yard set. We've got two good bulls in the yard. One of them's pretty young. He's got a lot of growing to do. The other one's pretty short and really stocky. We've got one for the wagon. Day two, yesterday we went out, went out with the guru, checking the yards, we found those two bulls trapped in the yards, way out the back there. Come home, hooked up the trailer, we're going back out. Now the plan is, instead of putting them straight on the trailer as wild camels, which can't hurt the animals, we are going to hook them up, we're going to slowly walk them back. It's about 50 kilometres, being wild camels, it might take us a few days, we're all prepared for it. It's important when you're catching camels to use extremely strong rope. I've got brand new rope here. This is good solid 12 mil rope. And I've got a softer rope here for the lasso. Now, camels are an extremely powerful animal. All their power is up in the neck. They have the ability to even lift the back of a car off the ground, okay? So it's important. You do not want your rope to snap. Not only do you lose your camel, but they learn a trick. They're very smart animal. If he learns to snap that rope and you go and get him again, you're in trouble. So it's important in the early stages of catching a camel that he's totally secure. This is his lead rope, okay? Nice and strong 12 mil. This one here is a little bit softer I use for the lasso. When we first get that rope around the neck, that head's gonna start spinning, okay? So it's important you don't want rope burn. What I'm gonna do here, just go for a little walk around them just to see what kind of response I'm gonna get.
can see here, the best way, we've used the trap yards. They haven't been chased with cars and helicopters. So already, we're off to an easy start. They're not trying to climb fences, run away from me. A little bit curious, and the fact that that animal's now standing there facing me, that's the sign I look for. What these things are here, these are called portable panels. Now, they're pretty flimsy. If I tie the camels off to these when they're first lassoed, they're just gonna rip them out of the ground. So we're gonna use this tree. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tie these panels to the tree. Okay, pretty simple trick like this. On the rope in here. Now this should keep them fairly secure. This tree's not going to rip out of the ground, not in a hurry anyway. So this is going to give us our best chance of being able to prepare the camels for their halters. What we're doing here is preparing the lasso. This is the most extreme part of the whole job. Now it's basically getting a rope here like this, It'll wrap it around itself, okay? Get it to a point like that, then I'm gonna do a bow line. Bow lines are good because it doesn't matter how hard and how strong he pulls it, you can always get that knot undone. So here is basically the simple lasso. When you do this, you want your knot about halfway down. Halfway down the rope, that'll give you enough and always spin your, spin your wrist. It's the best way to do it. Right, let's have a crack. up now, no matter of bringing him in. We've got enough extension here, walk up, twist the rope a couple of times so it don't slip out. Let him settle a bit.
Fair way to go. I'm going to double, double the rope. Okay, so like I said, these guys have got intense power. So if they break one, I've got a second one for backup. You're all right, big fella. Hey, you've done well, mate. You've done well. See here on his mouth, he hasn't got his fighting canines up in there, and he's still got his young teeth. Okay, when he's about five, you lose these teeth and grow them. So he's going to be a fairly, fairly big camel. You're all right, big fella. Mate. Now you'll see plenty of videos, and there's also places you can go to learn to deal with training camels. Now, one thing, a lot of those camels are handled when they're young, and they're quite easy to pull around. But when you get these big ones out of the bush, right, it's quite intense. There's a lot of dangerous positions to come in. Now this bloke, he can swing his neck, he can grab you at any time. His worst part is his front legs, okay? If a front leg gets you, it can snap your neck, okay? His back legs can go either way around him, and even when sitting down, he has the ability to throw all four legs around in any direction. But his biggest killer is when he drops that neck on the ground and swoops you off your feet, drops you, he'll throw those front legs down beside his body, and underneath his chest there, you can see a brisket. Now that's what he's gonna hit you with. And he'll hit you like a polack. And a bull camel, if he gets you down, he won't let you up. Okay, so they're very dangerous. So if you think you see some of these things where you can train camels with all this stuff, you go out in the wild, just be aware that these guys are extremely dangerous. Well, yeah, that's the easy one out of the way. Got this bloke over here. He's a full grown bull, this bloke, so he's going to be next level. What he's going to do is just try and get a rope around him. I'm just going to see his response.
pas son lot. Front leg, you see. Okay, I'm in a bit of a horror spot, aren't I? both hooked onto the trailer now now it's a matter of slowly poking our way home we've got about 50 kilometers to do so we'll see how far we get tonight doesn't matter how long it takes us even if it takes us five days that's okay all right boys you ready let's go That's the end of day one. You can see old, been calling him Bull Plonk. He's been plonking a long old day. You can see old Bull Plonk, he's starting to chill right out now. Probably only done about 
maybe just over 15 k's with him, cruising along. He's got a bit of that nice green bush there. He's been having a little chew along the way. So he's starting to get it. Full plonk. This young fella here, pretty tall, isn't he? He's starting to calm down too. Enjoying a little bit of green pink. We were ready by walking the camels first day. No, we left well and truly after lunch. Only been going about a few hours. Yeah, big fella. And already starting to take a bit of this out of my hand. So in another couple of days, I should be pretty quiet. Now we got in last night about, probably about midnight. We wanted to get to this yard. It's a good little yard to put them in because we haven't taught the camels to hobble. We don't want to leave them out there tied by the neck for the night. So we pushed through to get to the yard. Now this is buck bush. This is like absolute lollies for camels. And the secret is this morning, I'm just not making eye contact with him, making him nervous. Just slowly bringing this in. Making a few chew sounds. He'll enjoy this stuff. Hey, you want to check me out? Do I look like an orange? That's the end of day number two. We got to the valley bore, so we'll let these guys in so they can have a drink tonight. Give me a big fella. You can see now I'm just holding him by the rope, the old bull. He's pretty calm. Off you go, big fella. Go and have a drink. It's only been a few days since we first got these guys out of the bush. You can see they're settling down pretty quick, especially this young fella. This is one of their favourite treats, the old buck bush. Come out for some big fella. When we use the term trapping camels, these are basically what we use. Set of yards in here, we've got the water trough over there. They come in like this. And when the camels come in, they push, they actually open it. And when they get in, it shuts. It's called trap. There's another one on the other side for the exit. The gate's shut, camels are stuck in the yard. <laughs> 